Hello, class. Today, my presentation is on Richard Rorty. Richard Rorty was born October 4th, 1931 in New York City, New York. At the age of 15, which is very young, he started at attending the University of Chicago. This is where Rorty um, got a bachelor's degree in 1949, and then he furthered his education and got a master's degree in 1952. Rorty continued his ed education to receiving his PhD from Yale University. This time period was about 1952 to 1956. Rorty continued, or then, so in all of these as or in all of these degrees that he received um, were in philosophy. In 1954, Rorty married his first wife, Amelia Oskenberg, who was a professor at Harvard University. That same year, they had a son together. After his schooling, he spent two years in the United States Army. Rorty then went on to teaching at many different colleges. He first started at Wellesley College, which is in the state of Massachusetts. Um, he taught there for three years. After that, he divorced his wife, but he remarried and her name was Mary Barney, and that was in 1972. Mary was a bioethicist at Stanford University. A bioethicist is a person who studies ethical issues. Rorty was a strict atheist, but Mary was a practicing Mormon, which really surprised me, um, which, but I thought it was cool. They had two kids together. Rorty then taught philosophy at Princeton University for 21 years. In 1981, he was the recipient of the MacArthur Fellowship, commonly known, known as the Genius Award. After Rorty, um, after Rorty became, after that, Rorty became Kenna Professor of the Humanities at the University of Virginia. Then, in 1997, he became a professor of comparative literature which is the study of literature and culture. This was at Stanford University where he spent the remainder of his teaching career. Rorty died in January or in June 2007 at the age of 57, which is really early to die. Rorty wrote many books, but there are three that I wanna mention that were the most popular. The first one was titled Philosophy and the Mirror of Nature, which was written in 1979. This book, Rorty tried to dissolve modern philosophical problems and um, focused on solving them, or rather than solving them. Rorty hoped that our experience of language might mirror the way reality actually is. Um, the next book that people really enjoyed is Consequences of Heroparagenesis, which, which was published in 1982. This, in this book, Rorty focused on how philosophy connected to the past and the future. He looks um, to the positive aspect of philosophy. The last book that many believe, or many people believe to be one of the greatest, greatest books that he wrote was Contagenesis, Ironic, Ironicity, and Solidity, which was published in 1989. In contrast to his early work, Rorty abandoned trying to get people to understand his theories and creates an alternate conceptual to that of Plato. Um, so there, there are the books that were most popular that Rorty 
um, wrote. Rorty had many philosophers that influenced him as a philosopher. The main people who influenced Rorty were G.W.F. Hegel, Charles Darwin, Martin Hinder, John Dewey, Plato, and Donald Davidson. He strongly believed in postmodernism. Postmodernism is when the student must Constrict, construct his or her own understanding and not be dependent upon the teacher to provide the answer. The answers that students provide are based on the experience and background that they have had. Since everyone's background and experience are different, it, there is no ab absolute right answer to the answers that they are being asked or the questions that they are being asked. Three main things that students must do to answer the questions that teachers are asking is to question, think, and analyze. As a postmodern teacher, they teach their students that they need to come up with a solid answer, but that it might not be the answer someone else has. There are many answers to the question but you need to think of your own answer. In our book, it states, as a postmodernist teacher, you realize that students', students answers are correct because first and foremost, it is their answer or their solution, even when society or the textbook may say the answer is wrong. Postmodernists believe that the point of going to school is to become personal problem solvers and not look for right answers, but seek right answers for themselves individually. Students are encouraged to have their own views on things. In the classroom, teachers are to give students the opportunity to contract their own knowledge through problem solving activities, case studies, and allotted time for class discussions to share personal points of view. While giving a student the opportunity to think for themselves, they need to be in an environment that is respectful and kind. Students will not have the courage to think on their own if they know their classmates are judging them. Teachers need to make the classroom a space where the students feel safe to express what they are thinking. Richard Rorty believed that there was no such thing as absolute truth. He argued that we are always dealing with multiple and conflicting claims of truth, none of which can be conclusively established. We choose what to believe based on what is useful for us to believe. In conclusion, the effect that Richard Rorty has had on my life has been more in a church setting. I feel like when we go to church, we are asked to make connections to different scripture passages that we read um, with our own lives. I remember when I was in Young Women's and we would always talk about things that we could do to experience God's blessings. In postmodernism, we problem solve through the experiences that we have had in our lives. As a missionary, I was glad that I could make these connections because it helped me explain different terms in simple ways to my investigators. Other than that, I feel like most of my schooling was not postmodernism. We would be taught facts and need to know the right answers on the tests. We sometimes did have questions that could, ans could be answered with our own knowledge, but we thought, or we were taught, but I didn't like that. I I don't like answering for myself. I, I would rather have the answer given to me or have a right answer because it's kind of, it's hard for me to think of things. So that's, I don't, so that's what I got out of my report. And thank you guys so much for watching. And I hope that you guys learned something. Bye.